Here, I'll say it. It's okay. No, it's more than okay for you to put your baby in their own room for sleep. And I'm gonna tell you why in this video. mama behind baby settler I'm also a registered nurse and board certified lactation consultant in the Charleston South Carolina area if you just found my channel I am so glad you're here will you take a second to hit that subscribe button at the bottom right corner of this video and be sure to like this video by giving me a thumbs up I'm going to give you four reasons your baby might get better sleep and you if your baby is sleeping in their own room and I'm gonna give you evidence-based research that supports my recommendation for transitioning your baby to their own room if you want to. That being said, let's talk about safe sleep for a minute. It's very important that you are familiar with recommendations for safe sleep. These recommendations include your baby sleeping in their own crib or bassinet on a firm mattress with no loose blankets, loveys, um, crib bumpers or anything in the crib with them. So it's just your baby in their swaddle sack. Um, I don't recommend a loose swaddle blanket for nighttime sleep. I recommend using a zip up swaddle or a velcro swaddle, something that your baby can't bust out of and have you know, come loose and be over their face. A circulating fan keeps the air moving so that babies um, don't have that stagnant stillness in the room. So um, this might be something that you don't know, but when we're breathing, we breathe out carbon dioxide. So when our baby is sleeping, if their face is up next to a crib bumper or a blanket and they're breathing out, they breathe out the carbon dioxide and it doesn't have anywhere to go. It kind of stops on a bumper or a blanket. They're going to re that rebreathing of that carbon dioxide could potentially cause your baby to have a lower respiratory drive or a period of apnea, which is a pause in breathing. So one of the major reasons we don't want to have a bumper or anything in the baby's room is so that there's, there's not that blockade for when your bre baby breathes out that carbon dioxide, a circulating fan in the space can kind of help keep that air moving. So when your baby's breathing out, if we have a circulating fan, we're keeping the air, air moving in the room. The next recommendation is for your baby to not be overheated. So really making sure that your baby is sleeping in a cool environment by cool. I mean, somewhere between 70 to 72 degrees, making sure your baby's not swaddled and then also wearing like a thick, fleece onesie or footed pajamas just dress your baby according to the environment now obviously we don't want our babies to be too cold either but it's really important that you make sure that your baby isn't getting overheated when they're sleeping but first things first during the first six weeks of your baby's life i do recommend you have your baby sleeping in your room with you not your bed but in your room with you. you'll be doing feeding so frequently at night that it really does make sense to have your baby close to you also it's helpful as you learn your baby's cues for feeding and sleep however once your baby starts to sleep five to six hours at night consistently uninterrupted, I recommend considering transitioning them to their own room if you're ready. It'll help both of you get better quality sleep. I want you to hear this. If you don't want to transition your baby to their own room, then don't. That's not what I'm on here saying. I just don't want you to feel like your baby has to sleep in your room for the first six to 12 months of your baby's life. Have you heard that recommendation or have you been made to feel that you have no other choice than to have your baby in your room during their entire first year of life. I wouldn't be surprised if you have. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommendation for safe sleep says room sharing for six to 12 months. <laughs> Excuse me while I clear my throat and catch my breath. Number one, if you are breastfeeding or pumping, you are like an open buffet. Your baby can literally smell you. I'm sorry, but who wouldn't wake up in the middle of the night to feed when they're sleeping next to their meal? Number two, you have a grunty, noisy sleeper. You won't be getting good sleep. Your baby is probably fast asleep, but you aren't. You're waking up with every single grunt or movement or wiggle that goes on. And you're more likely to intervene when you should be pausing maybe when your baby's just transitioning through a sleep cycle, not really awake. And doing so isn't going to be ideal for helping your baby learn to extend their nighttime sleep. If you're looking for more information on implementing the pause or really how to help your baby extend their nighttime sleep, 
I have a Babies Made Simple online course for you that I'll link in the details below. It has videos and a whole 63 page plus manual that kind of outlines what to do week by week to set your baby up for sleep. But here I just want to mention that a pause is definitely helpful and making sure not to intervene when your baby is actually just transitioning through sleep cycles and not actually awake. And number three, as your baby learns to self-soothe and fall asleep independently, that's going to be really hard to do if your eyes pop open every time her eyes pop open. I would even argue it's more traumatizing to our babies to be visually seen and ignored than to have your baby in another room and you implement the pause I was just referring to. That pause helps to see if your baby will settle and go back to sleep before you intervene. And then here's my last thought. If you have to return to work or when someone in your house returns to work and your 6 a.m. alarm clock goes off, are you really ready to have your little one be up? Because if he's in your room, he will be. Or wouldn't you much rather enjoy a shower or a cup of coffee before you go get your little one if they're still sleeping? So these are my thoughts and professional opinions, but I also am gonna link some research in the description box below from Behavioral Sleep Medicine to back up my thoughts. But I wanna share with you here a little bit about what exactly it says. So this is what it says. Restating what the AAP currently recommends, it suggests that it is ideal for infants to room share, but not bed share, with caregivers until 12 months of age in order to reduce the risk of sudden unexpected infant death syndrome. However, this is despite the fact that the highest risk period for SIDS is at ages two to four months and that 90% of SIDS cases occur before six months of age. I've cited another source in the description for this statement too. Furthermore, it may give parents the impression that risk for SIDS remains high in late infancy and thus unnecessarily create heightened parental anxiety. An additional important consideration raised by the new guidelines involves a critical aspect of healthy sleep development in infants and toddlers. That is the attainment of the ability to self-soothe and self-regulate to sleep. For example, studies have shown that infants and toddlers who have achieved such self-regulatory behaviors have fewer disruptive night wakings, resulting in improved sleep for infants and their parents. I'll also link, link that below. Standard sleep recommendations as part of anticipatory guidance for infants typically include having the caregiver put the infant to sleep at bedtime drowsy but awake and leaving room in order to facilitate independent entry into sleep. Acquisition of this learned developmental skill then allows the infant to independently return back to sleep after normal nighttime wakings again without requiring caregiver intervention and reduces the risk of developing inappropriate sleep onset associations that lead to prolonged and problematic night wakings, one of the most common sleep issues in young children. Thus, room sharing could potentially interfere with independent self-soothing and self-regulation if the caregiver is unwilling or unable to implement these procedures at bedtime or during the night if the infant is sleeping in the same room. Okay, those were a lot of citations. I linked them all in the description box below. But long story short, if you want to put your baby in their own room to sleep, you should, and you can feel confident doing so. I hope this video was helpful to you. Hit that thumbs up button if it was, and if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments about this video, drop them in the comment box below. I see all the comments and respond to all the questions. And don't forget, you've got this.